Hi folks, hope you're all well out there. While I'm still busy preparing to finish a video about the matrix network, I thought I'll just do this video quickly about the chargey devices. This is that red USB device you'll see there in the picture. It's attached to my USB hub. But before I start with that, let me just make a disclaimer about this. I have actually purchased three chargey devices so far. I've purchased one of the Kickstarter editions, which did have, develop a problem and the supplier said I could, they would either replace it for me free of charge or I could just pay for the upgrade. So I paid for an upgrade and at the same time ordered another new Chargey Gold Edition as well for my wife's phone. So I have actually paid in full for my Chargies and like I said I got the upgrade price on the other one. So there's been obviously no other communication apart from that with chargey themselves. These are all my own devices that I chose to purchase. And yeah, you might be asking, so why would you want a chargey? Well, there is that school of thought around lithium-ion batteries that we should sort of try and ideally keep the charge level between 20 to 80 percent or so, and certainly not continuously charging the lithium-ion batteries to 100 percent, or specifically, you know, 100 percent and, and it keeps charging the whole night. So with that in mind, this is specifically what the Chargey tackles and it's got, you know, one or two additional advantages for that as well. And then also bearing in mind the iOS devices on the iPhone, for example, the, yes, it does have now optimized charging. Mine has not yet started after many months to limit the charging to 80% and then sort of charge it up to 100 just before you expect to use it. But you know that is under ideal situation if you're going to be leaving or starting every day at exactly the same time. So as I said, that hasn't really worked for me yet. And if you're traveling to work and home and sitting in the car for an hour and you need your phone uh, plugged into your car play on the dashboard, you're still sitting with that issue that the car is potentially charging your phone to 100% when you drive to work, when you drive back. And like I said, that is not always considered very healthy for lithium ion batteries. And I have tested the Chargey inside my vehicle and it is working with data pass through. So even though it's managing and controlling the charging, the CarPlay is unaffected and Waze and my other stuff is actually working fine. So then what does the Chargey actually do? The Chargey is a hardware device. It fits in line on your charging as I'm showing in the diagram there. And essentially it's got an app running on your Android or your iPhone and it's monitoring temperature of the phone as well as the charge level and you can set it for a custom charge level where it should hold the charge uh, whether 80 percent 75 percent 90 percent whatever you want and it will hold it there and it's got a certain drop rate that it'll allow for and that again you can you can set up and customize so if we go through the settings of the chargey that will probably explain it in a little bit more detail so let's just have a look at that then this is what the app looks like if you've just opened it and I will now connect the phone's charging cable to the chargey device, the USB port. It's found the chargey and there now the app is showing my battery is currently at 47%. It's set to stop at 80%. You can see the 80 just above the symbol and there you could just use your finger to slide it left and right to change whatever the target level is that you want. I'm going to leave it at 80%. We can click on the temperature icon and see what sort of controls we've got over the battery temperature cutoff there. That'll monitor the temperature and if it starts getting too warm uh, it will reduce charge as well to protect the battery. Then touching on that power icon will bring up charging power measurements. This is for the Chargy A devices only onwards. And there's also a set threshold. Now this can be used for hardware limiting the power. If for example you would lost the app connection or other things, this is sort of an override you can set to, to actually adjust it at the hardware level. The Bluetooth icon there will bring up some controls for the Bluetooth connection itself and essentially you can just adjust the transmit power here. Obviously if you've got two charges maybe fairly nearby or in rooms adjacent to each other you can adjust them down just so you don't uh, you know connect to the wrong one when you're busy charging. 
Then moving to the settings screen on the app, this is where you set the allowed charge drop. So I've got mine set for 3%. So when it gets to 80%, it'll stop charging. It'll wait until it drops to about 77% and then continue charging up to 80% again. So you can play with the setting a bit. It obviously also just allows for it not being too low, you know, the, the following morning. You can also disable the LED lights here if they are disturbing, you know, at night while you're sleeping. So that's all the app settings. I can just show a screenshot quickly of what I took the next morning when I woke up. There was the battery sitting at 80%. It was set for 80 and it was holding there at 80%. And you can see there just a little bit of power uh, still going through it. It was now really ready for the next day's use. And I think with that, let's just have a look at one or two of the battery screens on the iPhone just to see what the effect was. So this was the screenshot I took just after I woke up and you can see there from the left hand side it was obviously going down for usage during the day. And that sort of the right third there is the 80% that it was holding and charging you know, during the night. That was where it went. It never really went above 80%. So it worked. It was maintaining its 80%. This last screenshot just shows the usage during the day when I took the car out and I had the phone plugged in obviously to get CarPlay to work I've got to plug the charging cable into the dashboard and what it's doing here is it's really again keeping it below 80% you can see the charge indicators just below the graph that shows when it was charging while I was driving but it has successfully held it there below 80% instead of it just you know brushing up to 100 and then sitting at 100% so Look, it's doing very much what it was designed to do and I'm quite happy, you know, at the end of the day, batteries are expensive to replace and in many cases you've got phones with sealed or glued in batteries. This is just something that can help give you some chance of preventing battery damage and problems that, you know, you may encounter and you can sort of sweat a lot more use out of your phone. So, yeah, maybe not for everybody, but like I said, it's a very good option. If, if it's something that does interest you, then it's pretty unique in its feel. I don't think there's anything else doing it. If you've got a rooted Android phone, yes, you can control it uh, with some of the software apps, but not everybody wants to root their phones either. So this is a pretty safe alternative and it works very well. I've been very happy with it. So that's really it. I hope you all stay safe out there and I'll see you in my next video.